realize that you have forgotten about yourself, that you've been doing everything else for everybody else, because that's the female nurturing, uh, beautiful side of us, right? Welcome to a new episode of the Eva Eckert podcast. I am Eva Eckert. I am your host. I am a Polish immigrant with a strong accent, kick-ass husband, and two beautiful kids. American entrepreneur sharing an incredible mission to inspire women just like you around the world to make bold actions towards their dreams, passions, and desires so their lives become more meaningful and fulfilled. I believe that the better superhero of your unique purpose is inside all of you, all of us, and we should share it with the world to make the world a better place. I hope that this episode will help you finally discover the power of self-belief and self-motivation so you can stop making the excuses and create the life you truly desire and deserve to have by being the upgraded version of you. Welcome to the show, guys. So in today's episode, yes, today's episode it will be all about a breakthrough. A breakthrough. As I was just sitting just recently and thinking, breaking down my days and doing all these things, and we've been applying the skill, chill, uh, skill, chill and kill days. And I'm thinking, wow, we all have 24 hours. We like, think about it. How do you spend your time? If you have 24 hours, ideal 24 hours, how would you spend your time? Just write it down. This is a fun exercise. We've done it in my group coaching in the past. Just write it down because it tells a lot about you. Now, 24 hours, eight hours of sleep, if we are lucky. Some of you don't sleep eight hours, I know. For me, from my own, I would say, experience and just recent obsession about scoring of my sleep, I know that seven and a half is a great one for me. I get an optimal score for seven and a half if I'm relaxed. However, if you can get eight hours of sleep, it's awesome. But if you sleep on five or six, let me tell you, this is not going to well, go well for so long. So you got to adjust this, but we're going to be talking about sleep some other time. So we spent that eight hours, right? We work for the remaining eight. Some of you maybe work a little bit longer. And then you have about eight hours left of activities. You come from work at 5 p.m. What's happening? What's going on? And this episode is for you girls. Because obviously we moms, if you are in a household, if you have kids, you have to prepare dinner. Maybe the kids help you with the dinner, but you really spending the time on a lot of chores, right? Cleaning the house, maybe cleaning after dinner, cleaning after meals, uh, organizing. But I, the, the, the reason I wanted to throw this episode out is because I've realized for coaching women and for doing these activities, this kind of questions that I'm going to give you at the, at the end, is that a lot of us waste our precious time. So I want to ask you a question. When you come from work, what do you do? Like, wh what are you spending your time on? Are you playing with the kids? Are you constantly in the motion of doing your chores? Because that's what women actually, we do. We multitask. M male cannot do this. But what's interesting is like, you can cook a dinner and set up your laundry. And I'm not saying that this is wrong. This is all good. But we also don't know where to stop. Where is the stop for us? You can work, work, work because you want to have a meticulously clean kitchen. You want to have meticulously everything else. But then you spend all this time on doing these chores. But then there is that lingering thought, that little seed that's been planted in your head for maybe starting your business, opening something up for you, doing something else. But yet you don't do it because you're going to be scraping a toilet seat instead of delegating this to someone else, 
having someone to come to your house and clean the stuff once a week, twice a week, cutting the lawn, doing other things, but yet you're adding to your to-do list so much that you can't do that. Why is it like that? Well, there is a procrastination factor. There is the fear factor that we talked about it before, that you're afraid, you're postponing this thing, you're postponing to start. Instead of going towards it, you're afraid of failure. But that to-do ongoing list, and that's what I wanted to do. I want to give you these activities that maybe open things up for you and make you realize that you have forgotten about yourself, that you've been doing everything else for everybody else, because that's the female nurturing, uh, beautiful side of us, right? The one that it's the giver, the service-oriented person, the nurturing person, the empathetic one, the one that will throw everything and go save the world, help others, help your kids. Yes, it's all good. But then in this whole chaos of being a tornado, of having your head spin in all these different directions, you forget about yourself. And that's why I wanted to do this episode because you did forgotten about yourself. I know you did because I deal with women on daily basis and they forget about themselves. It's a constant thing. They don't work out. They don't eat healthy. They are always stressed. They have high cortisol levels. They cannot lose weight and they are spread in all these different directions. Some of them are entrepreneurs. Some, it might be you. Some of them are stay-at-home moms and they still don't have time. They still don't make the time to work out. And some are 50-50, you know, the, the, they, they do a little bit of everything or they are entrepreneurs and they uh, also stay at home mom. So I wanted you to do this uh, short exercise because I believe that will help you, that will help you establish something that maybe you forgotten, you have been unhappy, you have been lonely, you have been feeling like so stressed. And then you questioning yourself, why am I do this? Why is like that? Why cannot have a better life? I didn't sign up for this. I want my life a little back. I want to have the time. So look, we that's why we, I said it in the beginning, we all have 24 hours. It just comes with a certain preparation, with not postponing things, organizing yourself, learning to say no to certain things, setting up boundaries, better communication with your family to show them that this is important for you and other things. So this episode is not going to be long. I wanted to tell you that. I want this short I want you to feel connected with yourself. I want you to feel confident in your own skin. I want you to feel energized again and feel like you can battle the world by feeling much better than before. Because constantly running and chasing your own tail, that looks like this. It's going in circles. So you're running out of energy. You sleep bad. You recover bad. And you're like everywhere. And you think, my God, what has happened to my life? Maybe you've been taking for uh, on, too, uh, on too much. Maybe you've said yes, too many times yes to too many things. Maybe you are not delegating enough. Maybe you're not asking for help enough. And look, I've been there. Sometimes I'm still there because it's a new thing that I'm approaching, a new thing that I'm doing, and I need to learn and ask for help. I need to rearrange my schedule. I need to say no. I constantly look at my schedule. I'm constantly debating and thinking, hmm, should I take upon this? Is this doable or am I taking too much and it, it burns me out? Because that's how you have to create balance. You have to say sometimes no to things. Sometimes it will require for you to go extra mile and push a little bit, and there is no, nothing wrong with this. But if you constantly, in that cycle of stress, you don't sleep good, you get extra energy at nighttime, 
and you wake up being tired is because probably throughout the night you think about the things that you need to do and you create that stress in your gut create a stress when your hormones are not leveled create a stress in your family for the next day everything is on the go you need to take a step back and see where have i taken upon on too much why my life is feeling like this you know i've been guilty of this so many times we would go outside we have a pool we have a yard and the kids would be like, come and relax with us. And I would be like, no, I need to organize. I need to clean this. I need to do this. And I'm not saying that I don't do this. I do it. But there are things that I would say, you know what? It's not perfect. And I'm going to leave it for the next day. Because it's not like I have a bunch of people walking into my house every day that I need to have everything in super order. Do I want to live in super order house? Absolutely. But sometimes that super order, everything in place will make you crazy, will get you to the, to the place of stress because you need to finish the day, otherwise it's stress. I used to knew a person like this. The, he, he, this person would never finish until everything was done. This person had a hard time leaving the house before something like the, the, the bed wasn't folded the right way. So this person ended up being late for everything, being ended up always being stressed and on to go. No. Assess the situation. And you know, if you have people coming to your house and the house has to look spotless every single day, hire people. That's what I did. I started delegating a long time ago. And you've heard me saying this. I delegate big things. No more cleaning the house and running around with a broom like a crazy person and spending those hours that you could do on something more important for you like maybe workouts so let's have this little i would say um, a little moment of journaling or really thinking this is what we did with my uh, freak female lion group coaching so sit down for a few minutes give yourself the time and write down how you you, you you wish to spend your personal time if there would be no chores some of you might be writing it down, I don't know, binging on TV and watching and watching TV. Well, that's not going to be a productive time. That's not really, you, you, you can do this once in a while. I'm not saying that, no, that we don't sit down and watch some shows. Absolutely, yes. But if you have a seed planted in your head of doing something incredible, starting a business, becoming better, better version of you, learning a skill, learning a language, whatever it is, you can't just watch TV. It's not going to get you to the level and to the place where you want it to be. Number two, start paying attention on how you spend the extra time you have. Maybe the kids are asleep. Maybe the kids went to school. What do you do in this time? Do you come home and you clean the house because you say, oh, I will go and work out later. I need to do this. Girl, you got to reverse it. First things first, non-negotiable first. So you got to go and do the workout first. If they are at school, go and do the intense workout. And I guarantee you, you're going to have a better energy to do something later, later that day. Or maybe your young kids are asleep. Get the IFFF, the free uh, infinite free fitness formula, free week is down below. There is always a link for you. You can get the workouts, do an awesome workout at home and let me know how it went. Number three, what has been missing in your life right now? What hobbies, what activities, what you used to do? It's crazy when we do this exercise. Women list all kinds of things. Some of them were playing piano. Some of them were painting. Some of them were wall climbing. I mean, life is full of joy. You just need to make the time for it. Number four, why can't you start doing the things that you miss in your life? Now, why? Is it financial? Do you tell yourself, oh, I can't afford this now? Or is it more organizational? Like you are spinning tornado 
you do not have boundaries set up. You say yes to everybody. You respond to everybody. People literally take advantage of you all the time. You drive their kids. You drive them somewhere. People constantly call you, text you that they need your help. No more. As far as financial lesson, you got to write it down how much you spend on yourself. If you go to get your nails done, hair done, I don't know, facial, spending on extra purse each month, spending on extra jewelry, um, shoes, and you say that you broke and you can't go work out, you got you to gotta do uh, some math here and say, you know what? I've been spending too much on this. I got to do something else. Are you satisfied with the way you look and feel? Because girls, fitness is directly connected with your well-being, the way how you feel, the way how is your energy is so interconnected. So when you start exercising, you're going to feel better. This one will shock you. How many hours of sleep do you get? Because let me tell you, that seven and a half of eight is magic time. And just the other day, I did not have a good night's sleep. My whole day was affected. I didn't have a good workout. And yesterday, just this was yesterday. I'm like, this will never happen again. It cannot happen. It affected my whole day. It affected the way I was thinking how I was, uh, because it really paralyzes our, 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 um, our thinking. When you think about it, your, your thinking become foggy. You can concentrate, you can focus, you know, the workout is weak because you can lift weights because you haven't recovered at least at this age. And when I am, I'm 47, when you 30 and 20, your recovery will be like this. And I remember those days, but when you are my age right now, and you want to do this, not sleep, not eat, eat good, not eat whole foods, not drink water, you getting yourself into the grave. That's what it is. You are not, what you've been doing in your 20s, girl, it's not going to work right now. It's not going to happen. So friend, I can't tell you enough how much you need to take care of yourself right now. This is, this is priority. Number, number, number five, List why you feel guilty if you do something for yourself. I want you to peel the onion because a lot of times comes to the fact that you just want to be around your kids. But sometimes women make this mistake that they want to be around your kids, their kids. They go and do the play dates and they mingle with the moms instead of playing with the kid. So how about not always going out with your other moms because the kids play together. The play dates are not for the kids. The play dates are for their moms. That's what it is. Like, think about it. So many times you're going to get so involved in conversation and, and complaining and just kind of bitching because that's what it was. Um, instead of like finding the groups that will support you and give you like elevated thought, your kids playing on their own and you're kind of spinning in the circles and complaining. It's not getting you anywhere. You're bringing more of the negative into your life. So how about Instead of going out and searching for the other people and constantly searching for other moms to do a play date, play date for you, not for the kid, you sit down and do some puzzles with the kids and do some other uh, a game or, you know, play hide and seek in the house. That's a quality time for them. But I think that's the problem because women are constantly with, with their kids and they think we spend quality time with them. Nothing wrong with this. Just being in a room with someone, that's not quality time. You want an eye-to-eye -eye conversation good conversations. And six, create a schedule when you give yourself at least one hour each day, something for yourself. Maybe you're going to go for a walk. Maybe you're going to go for a massage. Maybe, you know, you're going to do a workout. That workout will be your non-negotiable every single day. And communicate clearly with your family. What I mean by this, you know, um, Google, Google Keep it's an application of on, on my phone when if I create a list of something, I can share it as a collaborator with my husband, with my kids. We have a family chat too. Our calendars interconnected. When we do something, we invite our kids because our kids are old enough. We invite our kids to this calendar so they can actually see what's happening. That's communication. That's showing them, oh, 
I have a meeting coming up. I'm going out with a friend. I'm going out. My husband, we're going out on a date. The kids know that Thursday is our date night. Unless we specifically tell them, look, we are traveling. We're moving our date time. And we communicate clearly with them. They kind of know, expect it. And they actually want us out of the house. <laughs> so communication is the key. Be consistent with it. Don't set back to your old patterns because it's easy. It's so easy to fall back, to go back to your patterns, but because this is new, you got to work a little bit harder on it. You get it? That's what it is. We got to work hard on it and eventually we'll get it. So girls, guys, I mean, we have guys listening to my podcast. I hope you love it. I mean, I'm speaking to all of you. However, I coach only women, but if you are a guy and love what I'm saying, I know that you're going to love my husband. So you can shoot him a message, steve.eckert1 on Instagram, and contact him about coaching. But in the meantime, I just wanted to say thank you for liking, sharing, commenting, making comments below. You're watching me on YouTube, watching me on other social media. Thank you so much for doing this. Thank you for being here. And remember, the superhero is within you. You just need to rediscover it. May your discipline, energy, and confidence be unstoppable. May your passion and curiosity be endless. May your enthusiasm be infectious. Your inner glow shine through the projects and your creations. And may your final outcome be of service to others. Each of us makes the difference in the universe. I make mine. And the universe is awaiting you. No excuses.